okay. Let us uh, get started. We were looking at magnitude response and then we saw first and second order systems. For the second order system we saw both the uh, resonator and the improved resonator and the inverse of the resonator turns out to be the notch filter with the 0 being on the unit circle and we also saw the improved notch filter where by introducing poles we were able to make the gain come back to 1 as soon as you cross the 0 and we also saw the moving average filter and that response was sin n omega by 2 by sin omega by 2 and then based on the geometric interpretation of the frequency response we were able to see that whatever magnitude response that the moving average filter had the same response we could get via the geometric interpretation. Now let us look at the next class of systems namely comb filters. This will be the last set of filters we will be considering as far as magnitude response goes. We will then move on to phase response. Let us consider 1 plus z inverse. So this is a crude low pass filter because there is a 0 at z equal to minus 1. What we will do is we will divide by 2 so that the peak gain is 1. The peak gain occurs at omega equal to 0 which is the same as z equal to 1. If you put z equal to 1, if you multiply by half the gain at omega equal to 0 becomes 1. So that is the only reason for introducing this factor of half. Otherwise this is a crude low pass filter, there is a 0 at z equal to minus 1. And if you look at the frequency response, it looks like this where I have plotted the response from 0 to 2 pi. The 0 at z equal to minus 1 causes the frequency response to go to 0 at omega equal to pi and this peak gain is 1 and this is the magnitude response. Note that the corresponding impulse response is half comma half. It is pretty straightforward just from the z transform expression you are able to see that the inverse z transform has this time domain expression. Let us consider this h of z to the l where I have replaced z by z to the l. So this is 1 plus z to the minus l by 2 and what happens in the time domain is if you replace z by z power l in the time domain just by looking at this you are able to see that for n equal to 0 this is indeed 1 but then the next power of z occurs at this particular value. Therefore, all the samples are 0 up to that point until you hit the index cap L. So this is corresponding to n equal to 0 and this corresponds to n equal to L and it is easy to see that there are L minus 1 zeros. Therefore, if you replace z by z to the L in the transform domain, you will introduce L minus 1 zeros in the time domain. So this is easy to see. The other implication you can draw from this that is when you replace z by z to the L, if you consider the response in the frequency domain this actually becomes e to the 
g omega l because all you need to do is to get the frequency response you need to replace z by e to the j omega therefore this becomes e to the j omega l and this therefore is 1 plus e to the minus j omega l by 2. To get a feel for the picture associated with this, if you replace omega by L omega, then all you are doing in the frequency domain is compression by a factor of L, because if you replace in continuous time case, if you replace T by 2T, uh, the behavior of X of 2T compared to X of T is compression by a factor of 2. Same thing is happening in the frequency domain here, you have replaced omega by L omega, which means you have compressed by a factor of L and hence you can expect when compared to the previous case when this was the frequency response between 0 to 2 pi, now that you have compressed by a factor of L, remember this is still the DTFT of a certain sequence which means this is, has to be 2 pi periodic. Therefore, you can expect this to repeat L times between 0 to 2 pi, that is all. And uh, as an example, if you take L equals 5, then you can expect 5 copies of this. So, this is 2 pi and this has to be pi by 5 because you have compressed by a factor of 5, the previous point which was at pi now will occur at pi by 5 and if you look at the zeros of this, these are after all the lth roots of minus 1 because you need to compute the zeros of the new transfer function where you have replaced z by z to the l. So, this is the lth roots of minus 1 and hence you can easily see that the roots are 2k plus 1 pi by l and the way you get this is minus 1 is e to the j pi, right. So, you have e to the j pi and then if you add 2 pi k nothing changes and then to compute the lth root you have to divide by l and so this is exactly the expression that I just now wrote. So, these are the lth roots of minus 1 and uh, this is called as a comb filter because these look like the teeth of a comb. And these comb filters are used in uh, music synthesis. Another variant of this is instead of a crude high pass filter, if you start off with h of z being 1 minus z inverse by 2, again the factor of half is just to normalize the gain, then you can see that the original filter. So, this is a crude high pass filter, therefore this, this is 0 at omega equal to 0 and the peak occurs at omega equal to pi, therefore the frequency response from 0 to 2 pi looks like this and in this case if you replace z by z to the l you have 1 minus z to the l by 2 again for l equals 5 what is happening between 0 to 2 pi now l copies of that will have to happen between 0 to 2 pi and if again if you take l equals 5 you will have something like this.
So, this will be 2 pi and one use of this is to eliminate harmonic frequencies and hence if you had a signal that had tones at multiples of this you can get rid of those tones by passing through this comb filter. Another variant of the comb filter is you start off with this you start off with sin n omega by 2 by sin omega by 2. So, this if you had h of n to be 1 between zero to n minus 1 by 2 then h of e to the j omega is this course you will have e to the minus j omega n minus 1 by 2. So, this is the frequency response. This is nothing but a scaled version of the moving average filter that we had just considered before we started looking at the comb filter. And if you plotted the magnitude response will be something like this where I have shown a rough plot assuming a certain value of cap n. So, this is this and h of z of course is 1 minus z to the minus n by 1 minus z inverse. And h of z to the l is 1 minus z to the minus l n by 1 minus z to the minus l. All right. And now what will happen is what is happening for the original filter between minus pi and pi if you say take l equals 3 then 3 copies of this will have to occur between minus pi and pi and here is a rough sketch. So, this is z replaced by z to the l a rough sketch for l equals 3. So, if you start off with this kind of frequency response if you replace z by z to the l you will get something like this again this also comb filter and one use of this comb filter is because it has peaks at regularly spaced intervals and comparatively much less gain in between this can be used to pass harmonics. So, if the signal had components plus harmonics at these locations when you pass it through this filter only the harmonics will uh, roughly go through. 